the oval portrait at first sight seems to reveal very few of the characteristics we have come to expect from the short stories of Edgar Allan Poe. But when we look at it a little more closely, we find tantalizing traces of Poe's obsessions, love, loss, illness, and death. Though here, the story focuses on other issues that also involved him deeply. The dreadful price that is often paid for love and the cost, in human terms, of the act of creation. Is the satisfaction? It's marvelous. It's just like a fairy tale. Are, are these paintings as old as they look? Oh, very old. Before the chateau was open as an hotel, the family that lived here was renowned by its fine collection. Some are many hundreds of years. If it interests you, we have a small booklet explaining the histoire of the collection. Oh, good. Mm. Eh bien, I will have George bring a copy to you shortly. Thank you. Does Mamselle require anything further? No, I'm very tired from my drive in Paris, thank you. Well, should you need anything, please use the telephone by the bed to call to the reception. Thank you very much. Bonsoir, mademoiselle. Oh, uh, yeah. Here. Thank you. Well, what do you know? A genuine French chateau. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Just a moment. Excusez-moi, mademoiselle. Je livre du château. Oh, the book. Thank you. Thank Bonsoir, you very much. mademoiselle. Good night. Bonsoir. Paintings hanging throughout the chateau are what remains of the grand collection of the Duc de Mornay, last of the de Mornay family who occupied this chateau for more than 500 years. Each painting can be identified by means of a small reference number that can be found on every frame. This number refers to the text contained within this booklet. Let's see. by Jean Deleuze depicts the sixth Duc de Mornay who founded the castle's art collection. portrait is a story of a tragedy. It is the last painting ever to have been completed by the celebrated artist Bernard Bouvet and is a portrait of his wife, Marianne. Ah. 
Ah, oh. and that, Countess, will suffice for today. We're losing our light, I fear. Your husband is quite the genius, Marianne, my dear. And such a flatterer. Oh, <laughs> nonsense, my dear Countess. I can only paint what I see. It is a uh, true reflection. Only, I cherish the thought I look half as lovely as you painted me. <laughs> you are too modest, Countess. Bernard has quite captured you as you are. My dear, you are the perfect partner for such a man of skill. Until next week, Bernard. That would be most suitable. Oh, thank goodness this commission will soon be over. Why do you tell your door? <laughs> no, but I must mix so much paint. But no, you <laughs> mustn't. <laughs> Suppose she should return in here? Oh, there's no fear of that. She's probably on her way to the kitchens. Bernard! <laughs> oh. Get up on that daze. There's still light for me to sketch you there. Surely you are tired, my darling. Ah! After gazing at that ugly old sow all day, I need to rest my eyes on your beauty, my love. Stay there. Quite still, just like that. Just as you are. Don't move. I'm getting tired, darling. It doesn't matter. I must catch you while the light is right. This is becoming an obsession. I have things to do in the house. People are calling all the time and I have sent them away. Please, Bernard. Please. Oh, no. No. Sit where you are. Stay where you are, turn your, turn your head a little to the left. That's right. That's right, hold it like that. Just like that. You are so beautiful. I must get you down on canvas while you glow as you do. But... If you paint only this portrait, we will be ruined. The important thing, as I told you, is that I get you in oils forever. Your beauty. Hold still. Hold still. Madame Beauvais, good day to you. You are well, I trust? Very well, thank you. Please, come in. I hope I do not call at an inconvenient time. I wish to see your husband. Not at all, my dear Duke. He works only upon a painting of his own today. Splendid! Maestro Beauvais, Bernard! Oh. Duke de Mornay. Ah, but I see I interrupt your work. No, not at all, Duke. It's a small matter of my own. Excellent. Precisely the subject of my visit. I was wondering if you might perhaps have some work that you wish to sell. As you know, I have been an admirer of your talents for some time. But my work's of commission for you. Oh, excellent, excellent. But as a collector and, <laughs> if I may say so, a connoisseur, I am well aware that uh, works of commission have more to do with the worldly. Mm. Paying the rent, mm. providing for the family than with the outpourings <laughs> of the artist's soul. <laughs> the uh, inspired work, the spiritual, mm. like this. 
<laughs> this is the sort of thing I seek. It's a small work of my own. Nothing. Nothing indeed. <laughs> this is magnificent. It's not for sale. I'm sure you will reconsider. It's not for sale. You will be handsomely rewarded. It's not for sale, please leave me. I am busy. My apologies, dear Duke. He has been working so hard. I dare say it's a strain. He's tired. As you say, my dear Marianne. As you dare say. What do you want? That painting of me, it's so, so... Look, can't you see I'm busy, hmm? Busy. Bernard, we must talk. Bernard? Bernard? Knocking a long time. Surely you're expecting me. Yes. Uh, my child, what ails you? Nothing. A little influenza, I fear. Oh, my, you should be in bed. No, really, it is nothing. My husband is in his studio. Mm -hmm. Bernard. Bernard. Bove. Bove, I'm here for my sitting. If you continue to ignore me, I shall inform my husband, the Count, to reconsider your commission. to sit for you, my dear. Am I in the right pose, Bernard? You must get some rest. You have done nothing but paint my picture for over a week. Darling, look at me. You are beautiful. So beautiful. And I have almost captured you. In a few days, I will have you all. All. Bernard, I am not well. I need you to be with me. But you are with me, my dear. Here. Two more. 
brushstrokes, and you will be complete, whole, entire, crystallized. Let me see your portrait. It has come to mean so much to me. Please, Monsieur. Madame, Marianne. I'm exhausted. I am childless. Your beauty in that portrait. It has given me such inspiration. I have become obsessed by it. Bernard must sell it to Monsieur, me. He will hear us and be angry. Please, Marianne, please. Madame Beauvais! Bernard, maestro! I wish to talk to you about that portrait, and I won't take no for an answer. into the folklore of the town below the chateau that Marion's life had been drawn from her own body and into the actual textures of the painting. Her husband Bernard was doomed to live the rest of his days in a lunatic asylum and his paintings passed into the possession of the Duke de Mornay.
And so, again, living beauty and genuine joy in creation are repaid at the end with horror, insanity, and death. And equally sadly, perhaps, it could hardly be any other way for Edgar Allan Poe. Admirers of Tales of the Macabre may be reminded of Oscar Wilde's famous story, The Picture of Dorian Gray, where the man remains forever young and handsome while his portrait disintegrates and rots as a result of a life of debauchery, disturbing and symbolic indeed. But Poe was exploring this territory about half a century before Oscar Wilde. In many ways, Poe was a trailblazer into the dark worlds a man sadly far ahead of his time. Good night and sleep well. Thank you.